Hello. This is lesson 8.3, seventh grade. This is about cross sections. So we will be looking at page 247 to 250 in your book. Okay, today's standard that we will be working with is standard G2. I can describe two dimensional figures that result from slicing three dimensional right rectangular prisms and right rectangular pyramids. We need a little bit of information, some notes to share with you. We need some definitions. So we need to know what an intersection is. And an intersection is a point or many points common to two or more geometric figures. So for example, the intersection of this line and this line is right, right there. So that's the intersection point. However, you can have more than one intersection point. You can have multiple points, especially when you're talking about a plane intersecting with a three-dimensional figure. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. These um, ideas of cross-sections, which is the intersection of a three-dimensional figure and a plane, the idea of cross-sections is something you're going to cover quite a bit in conic geometry. So let's take a look here. At what I mean by that. So this here is a plane and here is my three-dimensional object. This happens to be a cylinder. Could easily be a rectangular pyramid or a rectangular prism or a square pyramid or many different three-dimensional shapes. What I want to show you is that when you take this plane and you slice it through your three-dimensional object, when you cut it, you get a shape, a, a two-dimensional flat shape called the cross-section. Our shape, if we were to slice this right across the center, would give us a circle. So that would be our cross-section shape. So now I've got some videos that I want to show you that shows you how different shapes look when they are cut. So let's start with this one. No, it should be full screen. There it is. Okay. So, oops, lost this for a minute. Slicing solid three dimensional figures results in different two dimensional shapes depending on how you slice them. If you cut through a cylinder with a geometric plane parallel to the cylinder's base, the two dimensional cross section is a circle. Any way you slice it, you can get two-dimensional shapes from three-dimensional figures. When you slice a cylinder from top to bottom that is perpendicular to its base, then look at the cross-section straight on. You get a rectangle. What happens when you slice a square pyramid? If you slice across the pyramid with your plane parallel to the pyramid's base, the cross-section is a square. If you slice with your plane perpendicular to the pyramid's base, the cross-section is a triangle. Remember, you're slicing a solid, three-dimensional figure with a geometric plane. You can slice in any direction. Just keep in mind that shapes can look different when you look at them from different angles. So orient the cross-section on the geometric plane. Slicing diagonally can produce different shapes, such as an ellipse or a trapezoid. Understanding the two-dimensional shapes that result from slicing solid, three-dimensional figures is important for geometry and ninjas. Okay, myself back here. Okay, so that was the video showing you just a little bit of how that slicing works when you slice through a uh, three-dimensional shape with a plane. Now uh, let's put this back and I got one more video to show you with a rectangular prism. Let's see, this is a, a man making a rectangular prism out of clay. So let's take a look at that.
right. Bring myself back here. Here we are. And shrink that down. And let's go back to our note sheet here. So that was an example of how to slice a three-dimensional object like that. So you will get different cross sections as you saw. I have a question to pose for you. So the question I want to pose is, is it possible to have a circular cross section in a right rectangular prism? What you just saw in the play, the Play-Doh uh, video. Is it possible to get a circular cross section any way you cut that rectangular prism? It's a question mark. So what do you think? Exactly. No, it is not possible. It is not possible because, because there are no curves in a rectangular prism, right? There's no way to get a circle out of a rectangular prism with all straight sides, no matter how you slice it, diagonally, up and down, left and right, no matter what. Okay, um, now I'm going to do page 248, and I'm going to put that under the document camera, and we're going to look at some cross sections. Okay, this is page 248 in your book, describing cross sections. A right pyramid, rectangular pyramid, with a non-square base is shown. That's this. Okay, it's a rectangle base, and it comes up to a point. It's a pyramid. In a right pyramid, the point where the triangular sides meet is centered over the base. The meeting point is right there at the top. The shape of the base is a, and I think I just gave it away, what's the shape of the base? The flat part at the bottom. Right, it is a rectangular pyramid, so the base has to be a, you guessed it, rectangular. The shape of each side is a, okay, the side is going to be, here's a side, here's a side, exactly, it is a triangle. Is it possible for a cross section of the pyramid to have each shape? So we're going to decide. Can a cross section, meaning if we slice it any direction, would we be able to get a square out of a rectangular pyramid? Oops. No, not at all, right? We couldn't because the base is not a square. The base is a rectangle. That would be different if it was a square pyramid, correct? How about a rectangle? Could we slice it in such a way as to get a rectangle? Sure, we could slice it right across the top, horizontal to the base, and we would get a rectangle. So yes. Could we get a triangle? Absolutely. We could just slice it down that little tip in the center vertically and we would definitely get a triangle. Could we get a circle? No, there's no curves, right? There's no way to get a circle out of a straight side like that. What about a trapezoid? Hmm. Yes, actually there is a way if you slice it at an angle kind of like, like that. I could even kind of draw that maybe if you just kind of slice it you'll get a trapezoid. All right, and then that one video I think showed that too. So you can go back and look at that if you'd like. I'll put the links on Google Classroom. Sketch the cross section of the right rectangular pyramid below. So you have to sketch the cross sections. If it's going to be sliced like this, what shape is that going to be? It's a right rectangular pyramid, meaning the base is a rectangle. When you slice it horizontally, you will get a rectangle. We might as well color that in nice and fancy, right? Okay. What about the second one? If you slice it up and down, straight down the center tip there, you get the shape of a exactly triangle. And the final one, if you slice it at an angle, which is what I was trying to show you up here, you get a Trapezoid. I need a different color for our trapezoid. So you get a trapezoid. Trapezoid has two parallel bases, right here and right there, right? 
Okay, number two at the bottom. Suppose the figure in B had a square base. So instead of a rectangular pyramid, we have a square pyramid. Would you change any of these answers up here is what it's asking. So instead of our base being a rectangle, it is now a square. So would we be able to get a square if we cut it? Absolutely. So number, number one, the square would change to a yes. What about rectangle? Could we get a rectangle out of it? Yes, we could get a rectangle out of it because a rectangle, a square is a special kind of rectangle, isn't it? How about a triangle? Of course, we could still get a triangle out of it. How about a circle? Still no to the circle, right? There's no curves. A trapezoid? Yes, we could still get a trapezoid out of it. So the only one that changed is that, those two right there. Okay, now I would like to do page 249 with you. So we're going to go to that page. Okay, this is page 249, our guided practice page. We're going to just describe each cross section. So let's take a look. So here's the plane. Let me grab my spotlight. Here's the plane, and it's being cut through an actual square box or cube, correct? So if you're going to slice it at an angle this way, you can see how this is tilted here, slicing through it, what shape do you get? Exactly, you can just see it right there. You get a triangle. Nope. How about this one? You're going to slice through a cylinder right through the, down the top, the plane down the top. Exactly, you're going to get a rectangle. It's hard to see that it is, but it is. I mean, it's hard to imagine that, but if you slice it, I can't do it with my hand. If you slice it right down the center like this, you get a rectangle. Okay. Let's go on to number three and four. So this one here is a triangular three-dimensional shape of some sort. Kind of, a, it's actually a pyramid, a rectangular pyramid on its side, if you look at it. And the plane is being sliced right down the center horizontally. So yes, you will get a triangle. And the last one here, a cone. Now these are, the cones are really interesting because you're going to be doing a lot of studying of the formulas that go with cones and when you cut through them in cross sections when you get into geometry in 10th grade. So you're going to be studying cones a lot. So this cone has been sliced, and here's the shape. Do you know what they call that shape? They actually call that a parabola. Some people call it a parabola, but it's a parabola. So this shape here is a parabola. Okay. And now we're going to go down to number five. What is the first step? In describing what figure results when a given plane intersects a given three-dimensional figure, what is the first step? Uh, well, you want to do what? The first step would be to me, because I would try to draw the shape, the 3D shape, draw the 3D shape. It's not the easiest. Some of you good drawers out there will probably find that a lot easier. So you're going to draw the 3D shape and then cut it according, according to the given information, right? And then where it cuts it, you'll be able to get your cross-sectional shape. Your cross-section, by the way, is a two-dimensional shape. So number six, describe, oh no, that's independent practice. So your homework then is going to be to do the independent practice, and you only have to do question six and question seven. Describe di different ways in which a plane might intersect the cylinder and the cross section that results. I'd like you to think of at least three ways to cut this. At least three ways to cut the cylinder. So you can decide, do you wanna come at a diagonal when you cut it? Do you wanna go straight up and down, horizontally? Think about the different shapes that could result based on the way you cut it. And then number seven, I believe I have that up. That's going to be page 250. So 250, you're going to just do number seven. 
So it says, what cross section might you see when a plane intersects a cone that you would not see when a plane intersects a pyramid or a prism? Think about the shape of the sides. So it's kind of the question we've asked before here. Uh, what shape could not result from certain kinds of three-dimensional shapes? So think about that. So you have those two problems to do, and I also want you to do, uh, bring this up. I want you to do the IXL, and because there's only two problems with this, it'll really help you a lot to do page, or I mean IXL, and we're going to go to three-dimensional figures. So I'm looking for where that is. There, there it is, three-dimensional figures. So I want you to, in section Z, three-dimensional figures, and then I want you to do number four, cross-sections of three-dimensional figures. So it'll look like this. You're going to have different shapes, and they're going to be cut, and then you're going to have to decide what is the cross-section going to look like. So I need you to do that as well, and I will be putting this video on Google Classroom for you, as well as the notes from today. So... I hope that you have a great day and we'll see you next time.